And we're back. And that is the cross-plane inline four air engine right there. Um, this is revision B2. Those are actually mislabeled. Um, and so getting this far to letter B means that this is like the 18th, uh, 15 to 18th revision of the engine. I've honestly lost count. Um, but yeah, lots of advancements from the beginning from when we first started. This engine in particular, being a four-cylinder, has very little friction. Um, and I can actually improve that further with a new revision that I'm going to be making very soon. I'm also going to be doing a build video for once on that engine so you guys can see all the intricate details and how it's built. And I will be releasing the CAD files for it as well so that you guys can build and print this yourselves and try it out. Um, so yeah, let's get into a couple of things before we get started here. I did want to give some information to some of the other YouTubers out there um, because I've realized now that this is a whole community that we're getting into, uh, this Air 3D, in, uh, 3D printed engines. And I don't know, I've been doing it for quite a while and I have a lot of improvements that I've found over the time that I've been spending into it. Um, so a lot of the times when I'm watching these other YouTubers, um, they're having trouble with throttle, right? So they're they're like doing what Tom Stanton did where they bend the tube and that controls the throttle. I did that for a little while, um, but then it just got tedious. And so I built this contraption here, which I'll do a video on. But you can easily see that it's just a lobe. It's an offset lobe. So when you pull it back, it crushes the tube more. Now the problem with this is this has been working actually for about six months, um, but it has now cracked the tube from squeezing it for, for so long and the tube has a reduced surface area inside there now it actually reduces the CFMs that can go through it so it's not ideal this is not ideal um, this is the dyno by the way for the single cylinder Tom Stanton style engine that I had made this thing ended up making I think 13 watts of power at its peak and it's just old technology at this point so I'm not really using it anymore. Uh, more or less just using this for the dyno since it has a Arduino Uno in there with a simple dyno inputs for both the pressure transducer and the um, RPM so I can actually get some numbers on the dyno. So let's put that aside. Um, I also wanted to talk about this. This was the um, supposed to be replacement for that throttle, uh, the, the throttle mechanism that I had been using before with the cam. Uh, so this is actually a diaphragm air pressure regulator. Uh, the same thing that you would find literally in the air pressure regulator that is regulating the air coming out of the compressor. Uh, it's the same thing, but built 3D printed, obviously. Um, so yeah, you pull back on this handle, and that's what controls your, your um, throttle. Well, what's really nice about these is that they are truly controlling your pressure, uh, they're regulating it, rather than what you're doing when you're squeezing the tube is you're cutting CFMs off from being able to get to the engine, so you're reducing the flow, but you're not actually regulating the pressure. Uh, so yeah, now this is, the, uh, this is the test engine for the new style. This thing is absolutely insane, it has literally no friction. Um, it's using ceramic bearings and it's using a polycarbonate sleeve with um, iGUS uh, filament, which is, is the same stuff that's in your iGUS bearings, um, your plastic bushing uh, that you run in your 3D printers. They're self-lubricating, so as the piston's going up the sleeve and it's losing material due to the friction on the, um, the sleeve, well, polycarbon is very hard for one, and it allows it to be very finely smoothed by a sanding. And then if the material wears off the piston, it actually releases impregnated oil into the uh, cylinder wall. So it, it actually self-lubricates. I still use silicone uh, WD-40, of course, but no, that is a huge improvement. Definitely get your hands on that if you can. Um, now the next thing, I actually seen Axel Dayton doing something similar to this in, in one of his last videos where he had made a variable valve system like this. So this is, I think, the exact same uh, exact same thing that he did, which is uh, where you just have a threaded valve um, so that you can control the height of the valve. So where the nipple on the piston is actually hitting the ball, 
to open the valve. You can manipulate that in real time. You can actually do it while the engine's running, and you can fine tune the engine because in CAD, you can mark it. You can mock it up all you want, and you can try and get the timings and everything perfect. But in a real world scenario, the tolerances aren't going to be exactly the same. And even if it's 0.1 millimeters off. That's enough to make a difference in the valve timing. So this allows you to fine tune that. Likewise, by using a thicker exhaust gasket here, or oil pan gasket, you can actually reduce the distance that the piston travels upward, and that can control the secondary timing um, since there's two timings that go into the system. It's a, it's a two valve system. Uh, so this allows, uh, this, this engine here in particular is, a, is for testing um, because this is going to be the new cylinder design. It's got ceramic bearings in it. Um, this is going to be the new design, uh, putting it in here. I'm basically just going to put four of these in line and it should improve the I-4 drastically. So let's go ahead and get uh, this thing running and let you guys hear what it sounds like. Oh, FYI, I am running two compressors right now to run this just because it is inefficient in the sense that it, it has a couple leaks. It doesn't have the best um, friction anymore. It doesn't have the, the, it's not very smooth anymore because I've been running it for a little while. So it's getting more friction build up. And I think this piston here, I think the diaphragm's cracked or is, t is torn because it's not producing as much power as the other cylinders. And it's making a weird noise. Um, but yeah, this thing runs, runs up to 6K. Um, I haven't measured the power output yet because I actually forgot to weigh the crankshaft and the rotating mass before I put it together, so I can't accurately determine the um, the wattage, like the, the power, but I can tell you that it looks like it's going to be running around 70 or 80 watts, uh, which is pretty insane. So let's go ahead and get into a run, see what she looks, uh, see what she sounds like.